Welcome to Mershman Seeds Cup of Joe. On this episode, Greg Davidson, our area sales manager, gives a field report live from Waterloo, Illinois. Ben discusses the importance of soil temperature in early season pests and how it affects your yield and profitability. Keep tagging us in your planting photos using the hashtag PlantMershmanSeeds. We love to see them. Hi, this is Joe Mershman. Welcome to Mershman Seeds Cup of Joe, episode number 37, season 3. Today we have Turk and Ben, and we have a special guest, Greg Davison, Area 18. Greg, live report from the field. Tell us where you're at and what you're up to today and what's going on. Well, Joe, I'm Greg Davidson, of course, everybody pretty much my territory for sure, and a lot of Merchant Seas dealers knows me. I'm the area sales manager for here and regional agronomist for my area, and I cover from more or less on the east side of St. Louis all the way about 80 miles east of there, and, uh, and north-south from about Jerseyville all the way down to uh, Randolph County down by Sparta. Report today, um, more or less... We got kind of overcast day. Um, we're going to probably put a plot in here at Waterloo this morning. Um, local area, we got a lot of guys putting anhydrous on. We got some guys finishing up, putting their solution and harmony on wheat. Uh, we got a couple of corn planters starting to move. We've been kind of wet lately, and uh, we finally started drying up before the next rain spell hits. And we got a, just a few guys planting soybeans around here. As you know, yesterday was the insurance date for our area for soy planting soybeans. And uh, so we're kind of getting in the mood. We're finally starting to take off around here. Well, that's great. Uh, are you planting a corn plot or soybean plot? We're actually putting beans in today. We're going to be putting uh, from Kennedy's all the way up to our new Memphis that we got coming. We're going to put down here at Waterloo. Good deal. What's the soil temp look like, Greg? What are conditions like out in the field? Uh, you know, you talked about drying out. or moisture look right? Soil temps look right? Where are you at? Moisture, we're, we're pretty you know, moisture. And um, soil temps, we're more or less, we're getting a little warmer. Uh, we're around 51 degrees soil temp. And uh, so we're slowly start moving along. Yeah, that's good. So is there anything different that guys are doing this year and compared to, you know, anything in the past, you know, or guys trying anything different? What's what's new and what's what's rocking and rolling in your territory this year? You know, th this year a lot of guys are starting to plant beans a whole lot earlier. Um, the last two years we've been pretty wet for early in the spring. And, uh, you know, these guys' mentality now is if we don't get it in the ground, earlier before a rain starts we're never going to get out there so we got a lot of guys trying to hammer as much as they can i talked to a farmer last night and uh he planned on running until about 2 a.m in the morning and he's probably going to be done planting beans probably in the next two days and he said uh he's got a little over 600 acres in the ground well that's great news greg we'll let you get back to work uh uh Unfortunately, up here in southeast Iowa, we're still in the monsoon season up here yet, so we're not doing too much, but we're hoping to, that it warms up and we get back at it. Well, you guys just keep that rain up there. We'll just keep on moving along down here. <laughs> well, we appreciate the suggestion. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Greg. Thank you. Yep. Well, it's good to see that at least somebody's in the field. Uh, hopefully, we will get, get there soon, too. Ben, what are the things that we need to be thinking about right now so where greg is at and all over the place everybody is worried about what the temperatures are going to be doing basically monday night tuesday night wednesday night where if you go clear to northern iowa those numbers dip down in the upper 20s if you get down in greg's territory those numbers the 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 surface temp numbers look like they're going to be in the low 40s high 30s so everybody's kind of wondering well do I start planting corn? Do I stop planting corn if the stuff, if the, if the conditions are right? And there's a lot of different articles on imbibitional chilling, but it's kind of a toss up on whose take you want to take away with it. But the common number that keeps coming back to um, the top of the table is this 41 degree soil temp. 
at two inches or wherever your, your corn plant's at. So you really don't want your soil temp to ever drop below 41 degrees in that 24 to 48 hour time frame. So that's when the, so you put the, 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 the corn in the ground 24 hours later to that 48 hour mark is when it's gonna take its first drink of cold water and it doesn't matter what the temperatures are or, or how it works. That right there is what's gonna set the vigor is that 24 hour period, 24 hours after planting. So really pay attention to what the forecast is gonna do, really pay attention to you know, your saturated cold germ tests if you have taken the extra time to send your corn off to do that. Um, we've talked about it a couple times um, in the past, you know, with the prices being what they are, it's really not a great idea to be tossing risk out there just to try to plan a couple of days earlier. Turk, you saw an article this week too about that planning and the conditions we have right now on corn. Yeah, they were talking that uh, uh, the chilling effect can cost you 10 to 20 percent on your yield, and 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 you will you will never be able to see it until you uh, look at the ear size uh, later on in the year, and then at that point it's really difficult to know exactly what it was, but it can, it can definitely affect you. Along with that, what you're talking about, Ben, is that planting depth is critical here too. Correct. Make sure that uh, you know we're, Ben's talking about that two inch depth, but. You, if you're a little bit less than that, that's going to drop down to that 41 degrees a lot quicker than it is at two inches or two and a two half. Two and a half, two and three quarters. So a good example of that is um, Unionville, Missouri is on the Iowa-Missouri border in the center of the state, and their two-inch soil temperature from Thursday, and it wasn't very it wasn't super cold, but they had a 61 degrees two inch soil temp as a high and a 35.8 as a low. Mm -hmm. And that was, you know, you're, you're, you're talking lows in the mid thirties. I mean, so it changes really quickly. So you really got to keep an eye on it. Yeah, that, the, the deeper you plant, the more stable that, that temperature is going to be. Correct. Where we would only come down to a low in Southeast Iowa of maybe, you know, 42, 43 for that yeah. four inch depth on mm -hmm. how they measure. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And there's a, yeah, the short-term forecast is that this cool weather is going to continue at least for the next couple of weeks. It looks like, right? And then, but their long-term, as you look into May, June, and July, they're still projecting above normal uh, temperatures. So, getting this crop started is going to be critical, and and paying attention to some of these things because, like I, we a lot of farmers say they they don't need to practice. They right. just want to do things once. And after this. This, these, these two days or these two nights of cold weather, you know, I'd be all for, you know, throwing beans in the ground because the beans aren't quite as critical, you know, after the insurance date, of course, but the beans aren't quite as critical to get up all at the same time, you know, when, with our seed treatment, with the load that we have on it, the beans can sit in the ground three weeks pretty easily. We don't want them to, but, you know, they can sit in the ground that long without, you know, be, being able to tackle seedling phytophthora, seedling pythium, things of that nature. And then, of course, the Trepidity ST is a, a stress uh, reducer. In other words, when that plant becomes under stress, it's going to feed it the nutrients to get through it. And uh, that's a critical difference between our product and many other seed treatments that are done downstream. Correct. Well, I, saw, I haven't seen any. The oak leaves are not as big as squirrel ears yet, so no. it's still not time, Joe. It's just still a little early. The other thing that I had here was uh, Iowa State has their black cutworm uh, report that they put out a couple times a week. Um, they track black cutworms and true army worms. So with the southerly winds that we've been getting the past couple weeks, it's been perfect ideal conditions for cutworms to blow in. Uh, there have been uh, four counties as of last Thursday that had significant flights occur in southeast Iowa and one county over in western Iowa. So if it's happening in Iowa, it means it's happening in Illinois and it's happening in Missouri because all those moths come up from the south. and this is going to be something to watch out for three weeks from now um, because you're really going to want to start scouting the weediest fields and we have a lot of henbit and a lot of chickweed and a lot of these fields from that are no-tilled from last year and um, the fields that are the corn fields that are planted some guys say first some guys say last the moths are going to be attracted to either the first or the last fields that are that are there because they're chasing that green that green plant so be aware of it we're marking it down on the calendar now i'm watching these maps it's something that we're going to have to scout for this year start, start clean stay clean yep and wireworms are going to be very active in this kind of a cool 
uh, damp weather we have right now. Cutworms love cool, damp, uh, so insects could be a, a big problem uh, this year with early planting. Correct. Turk, what do you think? Well, <clears throat> like I said, the it's it's a little early to be thinking about corn, in my opinion, here yet. This is not the year to not have get it done perfectly with uh, with the prices where they're at and where <clears throat> we could potentially go you need to do everything you can to get that perfect stand and take care of it and that means the scouting for your cutworms and uh, getting that planting depth perfect and keeping your start clean uh, stay clean fields uh, so you don't have any yield loss you know the, the, the highest yield of the year is the day you put it in the ground and everything from there is downhill mm -hmm. when it comes to management and, and yield potential. So we're at, we're at very, very high levels right now. Is there, how high can we go? Uh, right now we're trading uh, uh, nearby soybeans at uh, the 1420 range, but in, uh, in uh, September of 2012, they were 1795. So there, there's about, four dollars more plus or three dollars plus more upside potential in a if if we have any weather problems at all with this year's crop on corn we're trading north of six dollars nearby but the high on that's 844 in in August of 2012 so all I'm saying is is we don't know where we're going to end up here on prices this year um, keep an eye on your prices. It's 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 okay to start doing a little pricing if you haven't. Again, as we've said in the past, you have to do something to uh, to uh, capture this yield because if we have if we have perfect conditions and 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 it looks like we're going to have really good planting conditions, which usually means higher stands and higher yields. If we have perfect conditions, we could see these prices drop off two or three dollars. Uh, on on soybeans especially and uh, on corn uh, dollar to uh, new new crops trading at uh, 470 and and around 1260 1270 on uh, soybeans so um, there is a, there is a spread those will eventually come together but uh, we don't know which direction they're going to go yet uh, another thing I want to talk about Joe is the Corteva um, uh, drop uh, announcement that they dropped the registration on their uh, new uh, uh, dicamba product that they were going to come with that had uh, choline salt and uh, they what they cited is uh, liability um, uh, concerns with that registration so they decided to completely uh, separate themselves from the dicamba market which will focus on their enlist soybeans and their and their uh, uh, enlist herbicide program so I think that's yeah, that's important. a logical conclusion for that company and, you know, definitely signaling, you know, all the brands that are in the Corteva, the Pioneers, and, and all the other brands that are in that system uh, that they're, 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 they're voting for Enlist E3 as the future trait product. So it's a big, big signal, I think. One uh, thing that I'd like to remind uh, anybody out there on the road is uh, we got this uh, from one of our dealers. Uh, there's an accident. Uh, uh, where a, a, a vehicle ran into the back of a farmer here uh, just a couple days ago. Fortunately, nobody got hurt. Uh, but just be aware that farmers are going to be driving their big equipment up and down the road and uh, give, them, give them the right of way and slow down uh, because uh, nothing's uh, in that big a hurry that you should uh, get in an accident. So uh, uh, this is the, the critical time for farmers to be planning and doing tillage. So they're bringing their big equipment out, give them the right of way. Okay, uh, what I have, uh, I'll get bring it up on my phone because it was uh, texted into me by Kent Steinman, so he can take the blame or the credit, depending upon how you view this corny joke. But uh, uh, this one here, uh, and, and Kent's our area sales manager over by Champaign County. He was on an episode, what, two or three uh, episodes ago. But anyhow, he sent this in to me, and, and you got to think about it a little bit. Uh, and this is a story about a lady and a taxi cab driver. And the title of it is, she didn't realize tapping him on the shoulder would, ha would make him do this. Wow. Okay. Last Wednesday, a passenger in a taxi heading to Midway Airport near Chicago leaned over 
to ask the driver a question and gently tapped him on the shoulder to get his attention. The driver screamed, lost control of the cab, nearly hit a bus, drove up over the curb and stopped just inches away from a big plate glass window. For a few moments, everyone inside the cab was silent. Then the shaking driver said, are you okay? I'm so sorry, but you scared the daylights out of me. The badly shaken passenger apologized to the driver and said, I don't, I didn't realize that a mere tap on the shoulder would startle someone so badly. The driver replied, no, no, I'm the one that is sorry. It's entirely my fault. Today is my very, today is my very first day driving a cab. I've been driving a hearse for the last 25 years. So in other words, normally the, the, the passenger uh, for in the last 25 years wouldn't tap you on the shoulder. So. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. Thanks, Kent, for sending that in. And uh, as always, uh, we thank all of you uh, for your seed business. And we appreciate uh, everything that you do for us. And uh, we hope that your planning is going well and you stay safe and your family's healthy. So we'll see you next week. Take care.